1996 I was born. And then, just a few years later, I was diagnosed with being a child. While I was busy being a child, my parents, bless them, had a real interest in moths and would raise them from eggs all the way through to fully developed adults. And in their spare time, they raised me. Unsurprisingly, I quickly became a budding moth enthusiast, regularly sneaking into our moth room after my bedtime, just to admire the beautiful little moths and caterpillars. Fast forward a decade or so, and here I am on a boat. I'm still looking for caterpillars, and I'm loving it. You don't usually need a boat to find caterpillars, but I've had a tip off about some pretty impressive ones, but they're floating on a plant in the river. I think I'm nearly there. I think this could be it. It was. The caterpillars are elephant hawk moth larvae, and like all caterpillars, are incredible. They're named after elephants because of their trunk-like body. Their heads are also a bit peculiar looking, with large circular markings. These are thought to imitate the eyes of predators to deter attacks from birds. The caterpillars will spend the next month munching their way through the vegetation until they are nice and plump. Then, get this, they bury themselves alive, sometimes behind tree bark, and undergo metamorphosis to become moths. Finding and watching the caterpillars really took me back to being a child. I'm not a child anymore. In fact, I'm pretty old. I recently turned 24. Quite the milestone, I think you'll agree. So, I treated myself to something really special. And it's over there. It's a moth trap! I am so excited to try my new moth trap. But, I need to set it up first. First, we have the tub. This will keep the moths from flying away once they're in. Egg cartons can then be lobbed in, giving the moths some cosy shelter. A transparent cone thing goes on top to let me see inside. Then there's this thing which holds the light. This is a mercury vapor bulb, irresistible to moths, according to the guy in the shop. Moths are usually active at night when it's dark. So, glad I had that installed. This is so exciting. So once the moth trap is set up, you just need to switch it on. And I'm gonna leave this thing running all night. So I'll be back just before sunrise to see what we've got. During the night, as the moths became more active, it didn't take long for the trap to start working its magic. Weird and wonderful bugs started to arrive, like this large yellow underwing, and this beautiful brimstone moth. These fuzzy little creatures look almost mythical. With over two and a half thousand species of moths in the UK, I was hopeful that by the morning, the trap would catch a few fine specimens. Just after sunrise, I slowly removed the egg cartons and bingo, moths, get in. This trap is called a willow beauty, 
obviously named by someone with low standards. And this center barred sallow is identifiable by uh, using a book. I was very excited to find this old lady had visited me in the night. That's the name of this moth, by the way. A frosted orange also stopped by. I'd have preferred a Terry's chocolate orange, but never mind. And the yellow underwing that we saw at the start of the evening decided to sleep over. I don't know what the hell this is, but it's definitely not a moth. You absolutely do not need a fancy moth trap like this to catch moths. You can also do it by putting a white bed sheet on a tree and tacking it on and putting a couple of lights underneath it. I would show you, but since this isn't my garden, I'm going to save that one till next time.